So, um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And we're going to go through, I'm going to go through this real quick because I, I know we're short on time. I don't want to take too much, but I definitely want to share some uh, important information here with you today. So, um, all right, here, one second. Can everybody see my screen okay? Yep. Yep. Okay, excellent. Okay, so we're going to be talking about the customer today. And, but first, I want to help you understand um, a, a little bit of a, a story I think is in, important for everybody to know. And, and that is about a, this young man right here. So this is Preston. And uh, Preston at the time of this photo was about four years old. And every day when I took Preston to daycare, I'd load him up in the car and he'd always fight with me, you know, oh, I really don't want to go, or, you know, he complained, but I could always find I could cajole him in the right direction if I promised to take him for breakfast on the way. So every day, Preston and I would drive by Hardee's over on Mountain Road, and we'd pull up, and uh, every day I'd order us a sausage, egg, and cheese croissant to split with a small hash brown and a sweet tea with light ice. And so every day when he would, he'd not want to go, we'd stop for breakfast, get a sausage, egg, and cheese croissant with sweet uh, hash browns and a sweet tea light ice. And uh, this went on and on. Hash browns, sausage, egg, croissant, sweet tea, light ice. Well, one day I couldn't take Preston to school, uh, to daycare, and Michelle, my wife, decided to go ahead and take him. And the next thing I know, I got a phone call from my wife. She goes, that's it, you're busted, mister. And I said, what? What on God's green earth did I do wrong? And she goes, guess what happened? Preston wanted to stop for breakfast today. And when we pulled up, I went up to the drive-thru. I said, hello. And then he said, sausage, egg, and cheese, croissant, potatoes, and a sweet tea, light ice. Quoted out the order verbatim. And she said, I think you need to stop. <laughs> so this little guy was nothing more than a traitor. <laughs> um, but what he taught us, and I think he reminded me as a marketer, is that in business, you need to understand that everything you do speaks to your customers. And there's a technique in delivering your message. And it really comes down to, if you do it often enough, you will never be forgotten. And so that memory, while scarring me, is a very fond memory for Preston. But little did we know, we were actually marketing Hardee's uh, forever in his mind as where he'd go with dad to have breakfast on the way to daycare, where we'd split our sandwich, have our hash browns, and then split a sweet tea. So um, I say that to you to kind of set the tone for helping you understand how to speak to your customers and um, creating these memorable experiences. So first off, you need to understand that businesses market products, um, but customers shop from pain points, all right? This is, people don't shop and say, hey, I'm, I want to buy a specific mattress that this dimensions by this height with this density material and da, 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 da. They say, I have a back problem. My feet, you know, I, I don't sleep well. I'm having issues. I'm having pain. So what do they do? They look for a mattress. They look for remedies to sort for that. So businesses have to continually think how to better address customers and talk with them in a message that means something to them. But it always can be very compelling based upon what the message is. So the question you have to ask yourself when you talk about marketing is, are you saying the right mess the message in the right way? I'm going to take a look at two ads here. This ad here is a, a classic ad from Budweiser. And I want you to take a good look at it here. Okay, so make sure you stop, pay attention. You have, she found, she married two men. And there's a nice little message about there. And you have Budweiser where there's life, there's bud. Now you fast forward or you change an alternate version of this ad and it said she found she has it all. And we have a different message with a more empowering tone to it. And now it's a little more modern of an ad, but the, ever, all the rest of the content, the beer and the product is the same. So this is kind of helping you open your mind up to say, sometimes the context can be changed subtly, which is little effort and it can mean different things to different people. Let's look here again, Budweiser. You know, they had, where there's life, there's Bud. You have the man messing something up, I'm sure, looking at that uh, photo. But she's encouraging him. Then you have more of a team, Budweiser. Where there's life, there's beer. There's Bud, sorry. And uh, happy home is, is 
uh, where life happens and life happens when you build it together. See, two people with Budweiser doing something, you still see a hammer in both of the photos, but it's just a different way in a different context. So when you think about your marketing, you have to think about who am I addressing? What's the demographic I'm reaching? Who is going to read this and am I connecting with them? And am I addressing their pain points? So um, with that, the key to success is a little Preston told us is if you, if you do anything memorable frequently and consistently, you'll have the greatest chance for it to be remembered. Now, let's talk about delivery of the message. And this is a fun little thing I like to help people understand. And then here is the formula to success of, in marketing. And I've said this before. To begin with, frequency times consistency plus a plan to the power of technology will equal success in marketing. All right? And, and this is... This is it. This is the formula for you to help get your message out there. Frequency, time, consistency, plus a plan to the power of technology equals success. Now, uh, the last thing I want to kind of lead you with is a little bit longer, uh, but I want to open your minds. A lot of people talk about marketing and how am I going to be remembered? What are people going to do? And so remember we talked about frequency and consistency. I want you to consider this. Thomas Smith in his book, Successful Advertising, makes the following reflections on effective frequency when it comes to marketing. And this is a little story I'm gonna take you through about what people see when they see an advertisement. The first time, people look at the ad and they don't see it. The second time, they don't notice it. The third time, they are aware that it is there. The fourth time, they have a fleeting sense that they've seen it before. The fifth time, they've actually read the ad. Now, conventionalism, people will tell you they must see your message seven times for it to be remembered. Let's see if that's true. The sixth time, they, they thumb their nose up at it. The seventh time, they get a little irritated with it. The eighth time, they think that's con that confounded ad again. Why? The ninth time, they wonder if they were missing out on something. The tenth time, they ask their friends and neighbors if they've tried it. The 11th time they wonder how the company is paying for all of these ads. The 12th time they start to think that it must be a good product. The 13th time they start to feel the product has value. The 14th time they start to feel like they've wanted this product for a very long time. The 15th time they start to yearn for it because they can't afford to buy it. The 16th time they accept the fact that they will buy it sometime in the future. The 17th time they make a commitment to buy the product. The 18th time they curse their poverty because they can't afford to buy this terrific product. And then the 19th time they count their money very carefully. The 20th time the prospect, prospect sees the ad, they buy what is being offered. Now, can any of you here relate to this? Looking at products out there, people talking about these things. Well, this wisdom was, developed, was written by this great author but you should know something. Mr. Smith penned this witty insight in 1885. 130 years ago, this man came up with this insight. Now, so I leave a question for you. How many, how often do you market your message? One, once, twice, one email blast a year? Do you really think you're making a dent with your marketing? And so I say this to you to really consider that marketing is about frequency and consistency. And if you want to be successful, you're going to have to make sure that you're doing all those right things to get it out there as often as possible. So I will stop right there and share that with you. I hope that was helpful to people today. That was awesome, guys. How about that family food for you? Did everybody have a good time? That was, great. that was great. That was great. I'm keeping yeah, my mustache on all day. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess I, I just want to say it's not an announcement, but I just wanted to say that just to tag, uh, to tag on to what Alex was saying, uh, if any of you are new to networking, I don't see a lot of you who are, but uh, the same thing can be applied to networking. So there's a realtor that I used to. I used to uh, write for, and she was in my BNI group. And I think she said it best when she said, you know, when I first met 
cat, I said, oh, hmm, that's interesting. Don't know when I'll ever need that. And I ended up writing and doing some marketing for her through blogs and things like that. And, you know, she loved it and she wrote a good review for me. So, you know, the first time you meet somebody networking doesn't mean they're going to say, wow, I love that. You signed me up. But you take all those touches. And, you know, I think I knew her for a year uh, until she came to me and asked me if I would do some writing for her. So uh, it, it just don't give up on the networking. Stick with it. Uh, if you're not feeling immediate success, because as people get to know you and other people try you and you go through the 20 touches Alex went over, um, you know, you find success. So that's it. Sorry. <laughs> He's right. You got to plant those seeds and make the connection. Yep. Yep. Yeah. As a good friend of mine says, you are forgettable. Um, perfect proof of this is, you know, Michael and I had a promotional products person that we used to use all the time. Um, and that person stopped networking, they stopped going to events, they stopped being visible. Um, and somebody else yeah. who, you know, shall remain nameless, but always wears a bright orange shirt, um, <laughs> has kind of sort of come on the scene. And, uh, you know, Michael needed something. And the first person he thought of was, you know, Tommy, tell me what to print summers. So, you know, um, so yeah, you know, if you don't keep up the networking, you know, you might lose those relationships that you've had. I have uh, uh, agree with Al Alex. Uh, I used to work for a large insurance company, and my boss would say, "Just to the moment when you're so sick of saying things that you think you're about to vomit, the customer gets it." So that uh, that's kind of stuck with me. I like that. <laughs> It's good guys. All great comments. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to give a quick shout out or um, actually piggyback on right before that and say a big, big thank you to John Maggio uh, and what Kurt said. Um, I was told about John's group last April. So it has been a little over a year now that I've been attending. And I remember when I first walked in, I didn't know maybe I maybe only knew two or three people in the room which was odd for me, but I was like, listen, I'm going to go every single week and I'm going to make sure after one year, everybody knows me. And literally that's, that was my mindset. And so I didn't, I didn't go in looking, Hey, I'm going to get work right away. It was what Kurt said and what, what you all have touched on in Alex, it's networking, getting out there, people get to know you. Someone will remain nameless, but there was someone who has shared with me in the past, I won't give referrals because I don't, you know, I can't trust people or I have to know and trust you before I can give you referrals. So sometimes it just takes that time. So networking is great. Thanks for the shout out, Kurt. Uh, John, thank you so much for putting on these events because if it wasn't for people like you, people like us wouldn't be able to get together and meet. So thank you very much. Much appreciated. Tommy, you, I sir. endorse that. I've been in this group for, for more than two years, and I'm looking at a lot of good friends and people that I've done business with and that uh, have done business with, with me. And it's just the consistency that keep showing up. Exactly. Thank you, John. Yeah, you got to show up. That's what Jim Procasini's whole game plan is. That's all he's got. He just shows up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And you only have to show up five I, I, times. That's all. Just I, show up five times. No, you got to show up feel, 20 though. times. 20 times. That's a joke from earlier. It was a segue. Maybe too much time. <laughs> I really feel like a, a salesperson for a whole bunch of different products from five <laughs> my networking friends, you know? I mean, there's nothing that I can't get for you, whatever you need, through one of you people. I, 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 <laughs> Can I make a couple quick announcements, please? Yeah. Kurt, thanks for Link Annapolis making that earlier so us Annapolis Toastmasters can go right from Link Annapolis to Annapolis Toastmasters. That's really cool. If you didn't know, it's a hundred and uh, two days till Halloween, and I have a project called Santa Tigers where I can put paint in your hand and show you how to become a tiger and show you and your little loved ones how to collect candy without uh, virus. And it's called Santa Tiger. Santa Tigers. <laughs> and I have a five gallon bucket of sanitizer. Guess where that came from? And I've got face paint. So there's a lot of good reasons. And I guess at Jill's September, what's your date of uh, your event, Jill? Why is that? September 20. I was, I, I was asking Michelle if she could find a six foot paintbrush that she could do face painting at the fair. 
I don't know that I'll ever paint you all again, but I'll show you how to paint your own. <laughs> Whatever you want to do is fine with me. <laughs> this could be this could be forcing your pivot, Michelle. So yeah. You might never give it up. You might never paint again, but you'll show us how to paint. So I wanted to remind everyone that next week I will um, teaching you, I will be teaching you how to be more productive using vestibular stimulation. Um, it'll be a fun interactive movement workshop. Um, so make sure that you wear some soft pants. Uh, those are my favorite kind of pants, just for the record. Uh, wear some soft pants. Have your phone, your computer on in a space that you can possibly get down on the ground and move around a little bit. It'll be a little, a uh, little different. Uh, and then after that, I'm doing a, you can spend the morning with crooks. Uh, I will be doing a, a small fee workshop for our um, sales with improvisational um, skills. So it'll be a or fun what's the, time. What's the system called again? vestibular system yeah so you're going to improve improve your uh processes and improve your sales with the vestibular system so no no no. it's it's you're improving your productivity with the vestibular that's what it is and then, and then if you want to spend the morning with crux learning with crux you can come to my um workshop that will be after a little break and we'll work on all of those fun improvisational sales skills. And actually, uh, Kurt's son, Cameron, is slated to be a special assistant. Kurt, uh, Kurt's son, Cameron, has been taking a lot of classes um, on improv, so he's gonna be my knowledgeable helper. Uh, so, you know, you never know what these connections are going to, are going to make for you. And, um, I'm just enjoying networking in Annapolis. Thank you so much, John. That's all you do. So if you want to know what the vestibular system is, you better tune in and we're not going to spell it for you. We're not spelling it for you either. V E S T I B U. -R. Laura, what are you doing? Laura. You're, you're letting that. <laughs> I mean, I the was. The secret sauce. <laughs> the secret sauce. The special sauce. Right? They can spell, they can spell right? it out. <laughs> um, I think so after this. Link the, both the events, I'm going to link the uh, improvisational sales one and the vestibular stimulation. Um, so, do we need to wear a vest or just the soft pants? <laughs> um, can you wear a vest for the vestibular or just the pants? Yes, you can. Okay, you wear can. A vest. Just something that you can move. I wouldn't recommend, you know, jeans. Um, if you have a short sleeve shirt, that's the best because um, basically, or even shorts will work. Um, the more skin to skin contact you can have, the better. Within reason, Jim. Within reason. There you Thanks, go. Laura. <laughs> <laughs> well, these Zoom meetings are turning out to be pretty creative and very fun. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. Uh, Kaylee, you know, what a great imagination to come up with such a good workshop today. Uh, you know, thank you, Alexander, for the great, um, you know, tips at the end there. And everyone, we look forward to the next time we see you guys. So tune in tomorrow, Wednesday, 1130, Tuesdays at 730 at Networking in Annapolis. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Bailey. Bye. Bye, guys.